morning, everybody. Um, pretty exciting day. Uh, you know, we do this every four years, uh, voting on our national and state executives and legislators. And uh, but just remember, if you don't vote, you're allowing others to make those decisions for you. So please, if you haven't voted yet, please do so. I'm, I'll be giving some information here about that process. But one thing uh, I am confident that no matter what happens, we'll come together uh, through this as we always have in Snohomish County. I'm extremely proud of how we've faced the COVID together and the response of the public. So uh, I'm confident that going forward, we will do so in unity. So thank you. So I have been in regular contact with our county auditor, Garth Fell. Um, he's really excited about the possibility of us beating our turnout record. Uh, it's uh, running at a pace that we have never seen before in Snohomish County, like many places in the nation. So uh, we'll look forward to that news. There's a lot of excitement, obviously, about the election. Um, we have extra security in place uh, at Snohomish County to, just to make sure that everybody's safe and there's no disruptions. And um, the process will begin tonight. Uh, we'll get the first round of ballots in uh, just after 8 p.m. But there are a number of uh, ballots that will come in after that in Washington State. You can uh, post your ballot or uh, submit it to a drop box as late as 8 p.m. tonight. So uh, you can return your ballot to a drop box. You don't have to mail it. Um, there's also an accessible voting site. Uh, at the auditor's office in, uh, in three locations really around the county. And all the locations and addresses, drop boxes and accessible voting sites can be found at our website, which is snowco.org backslash elections. That's snowco.org backslash elections. If you need a replacement ballot, you can download one at votewa.gov and uh, submit that. And if you need to register to vote or get a replacement ballot or use accessible ballot marking tools, you can visit our staff at one of the three accessible voting sites. Locations are open until 8 p.m. tonight, and, but please don't wait until the last minute. So the accessible voting sites are uh, at the county public meeting rooms on the Snohomish County campus in Everett. The second is at the Alderwood water and wastewater district offices in Linwood. And the third is the Wyndham Garden Hotel in Arlington. And you can go to the auditor's webpage for addresses or uh, use your favorite map app. So local election results will be posted at snowco.org uh, after 8 p.m. tonight. But due to the large number of voters that return their ballots early, the auditor's office may have more than 65% of the ballots tabulated as part of election night results. But again, um, the first round, a good uh, number of the ballots will be tonight, but they'll also come in over the coming couple of days. So one final comment, uh, some will be celebrating victory and some will be mourning loss following this election. Let's be smart, uh, keep our social distancing measures in place, wear a mask, don't gather with more than five people from outside your household and keep that six feet of distance. Uh, we don't need more cases not uh, you know, need to add them to our near record totals just because we're letting down our guard. So Dr. Spitters will be giving us some more information about the uh, increase in cases that we've been seeing. So please go vote. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Spitters. Thank you, Executive Summers. And good morning, everyone. Uh, so uh, just to, uh, to review, our new case rate is at 126 cases per 100,000 residents over the past 14 days, uh, extending up through Saturday, uh, uh, October 31st. Uh, so that was a small, about a 5% increase up from 120. Uh, so relatively speaking, that's uh, an improvement in the trajectory, uh, suggesting that maybe we're starting to flatten things out. The absolute level is still uh, much higher than we would like to see. So uh, I guess um, uh, mixed messages, uh, but, but the, the bottom line is, let's try to keep bending that curve and let's get it pointed downward. Try to bring things back down, protect our, our older populations and other medically vulnerable people, reserve hospital capacity. 
uh, and, and I'll review in a minute the, the methods we all know for doing that. I, I would like to note, though, that Sunday, for instance, was our highest single day total of newly reported cases since the beginning of the pandemic. Previously, there was a, a case count of 135 back in the in March when things were peaking during the first wave. Uh, but just a reminder that uh, we're seeing still lots of cases being reported and this bend in the curve, uh, we've really got to all uh, put our hearts into into uh, following the, the common sense guidelines to try to reduce transmission because um, otherwise things can and will keep going up. Most of the new cases that have been occurring are in close contacts of known cases or those who have no occupational or personal risk factors and don't know exactly where they did get it. Those are the two leading groups. We've also seen significant increase in long-term care facility cases which over the preceding two weeks accounted for about uh, 6% uh, overall cases. Uh, so a small proportion, but a large number. They went from single digits up to 60 over the past month uh, in, the, in the rolling two week period. So uh, that's a group we're particularly concerned about due to their vulnerability to develop severe disease and hospitalization. Uh, uh, both the, the key outcomes we're all trying to prevent. Speaking of hospitalizations, we're currently at 25 hospital beds in Snohomish County are filled by patients who are in there for COVID. Uh, seven of those are on ventilators. That is, uh, uh, we're, we really kind of plateaued at that level. We went from the teens a couple of weeks ago up into the low 30s and then came back down into the 20s and have been bumping along there. So uh, that's overall, that's about three to 4% of hospital beds in Snohomish County below the threshold of 10% that is a, a, a danger signal regarding acute care capacity in the county. So we're currently okay in that respect, but these increasing case rates and including the increasing rates in older adults really across all age groups now we're seeing increases, but including the older adults, that and the increased cases in long-term care does uh, raise concern about where hospitalizations will go, particularly if we're not able to, to bend the curve down or if, if things take off through the older population, either in the community or in long-term care facilities. Uh, so it's really upon all of us to, to continue to try to chip in and Think of the community when we're when we're making these decisions about how we're spending our time and then what we're what we're doing to protect others when we're coming into settings where there are crowds, gatherings, what have you. So face coverings at all times outside of the house, uh, when you're not with your household members uh, in your house, when there's other people in there, also wearing face coverings and then limiting uh, your exposure to crowds. If you go into a place of commerce and you have the option uh, and it's too crowded, leave, go somewhere else or wait till a time when things are, are less busy. And again, try to, try to con, um, uh, curtail your social activities and, uh, to uh, at the most five people outside your household. Uh, I personally would suggest even trying to go beyond that just to help try to, to, try to bend the curve and really curtail all non-essential uh, social activity uh, outside the home. And inside the home, uh, you know, if you have people over, try to do it outside, try to do it with doors and windows open and heat cranked up. It sounds crazy and antithetical to, uh, you know, uh, what we would say a few years ago when we're trying to conserve energy and that sort of thing. But right now the key is interrupting COVID transmission. So limit gatherings, try to do it in the safest way possible when you do choose to do it. But again, the default is limit, limit gatherings, and we need everyone to chip in in this respect. Speaking of face coverings, I'd also like to address uh, some comments we're seeing uh, on most of our social media uh, lanes. These, in, these are related to face coverings that the recent increase in cases suggests that masks don't work, and that's uh, simply not true from both uh, studies looking at physics uh, and the generation of aerosols from people when they breathe, speak, uh, sing, cough, sneeze, 
it's all, all of that is limited, that cloud of aerosol droplets, little tiny droplets, the largest of which are visible, but most of which are invisible and that hang around our head and then drift around the room and hopefully blow out the, the window or door uh, uh, if they don't fall to the ground. Those can be inhaled by other people. Wearing a face covering uh, restricts the amount of that cloud that's generated uh, even when we're, we're speaking and breathing, we don't need to be coughing or, or speaking loudly to generate that cloud. So we know from physics experiments that that limits our ability to generate that infectious aerosol cloud. We also know from epidemiologic studies and, and other analytic models that uh, uh, jurisdictions, be they county, states, what have you, that have imposed face covering mandates have had a better outcome in the weeks and months that follow in terms of uh, cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. Uh, that's true in the U.S. and around the world. Uh, so when we see that cases are going up, it suggests that face coverings are not being used universally uh, and uh, or not used correctly. So again, uh, if you're getting together with people who are not out of your household, whether it's in your household or outside of it, wear a face covering. You're out in public, whether it's outdoors or indoors, wear a face covering. Going into places of commerce, work, what have you, face covering, plus all the other common sense ones, physical distancing, frequent hand washing, uh, frequent uh, cleaning of, of uh, or sanitizing of frequently touched uh, surfaces. Uh, some updates on uh, the health district's testing activity. We are finalizing a change in the laboratory that we're using and its notification process that's used by our testing sites at the Broadway and Linwood Food Bank locations. Once that uh, change occurs, test results will be available two to three calendar days after testing, as opposed to the three to four business days that had been the typical uh, wait for uh, folks after they got tested through our sites. There will be a portal where people can access their results as soon as they're uploaded by the laboratory rather than waiting for the health district to release, call, or email those results. Please look for more details on Friday in our press release. Uh, this is also a reminder that we uploaded our newest snapshot extending through the period, uh, the two week period ending October 24. The weekly report is also posted at that site and the heat maps, those were all posted yesterday. Uh, so with that, I'd like to turn it back to Executive Summers. Thank you, Doctor. Um, there was one question about the case count on Sunday, what the total was, uh, you didn't mention it. Heather, Heather's posted it, but you might wanna to speak to it. Yeah, 141, excuse me. So that's, uh, that's if we did that every day, uh, uh, I have to do the math quickly, but I think that's, you know, that would take us way up to over 200 cases per 100,000 per two weeks. Uh, so not not sustainable. Uh, there are ebbs and flows in the case reporting, but but uh, despite the bend in the curve, that experience on Sunday is, is cause for concern for among all of us, as well as motivation to really take efforts to, to bend that curve down. Hey, question, uh, what is driving the cases in long-term care facilities and uh, what was the location of transmission among close contact social gatherings uh, or at home? Uh, so what, what's driving the, the cases in long-term care facilities? There is one dominant outbreak at a facility in, in Monroe that's up to about uh, number of cases in the high 50s. That's roughly and this is true across all long-term care, those cases are typically roughly split 50-50 between staff and residents. How do those get fueled? Well, the, the infection enters the building either uh, on a new patient, on a staff member, or on a visitor. Uh, so we there are um, measures in place to screen all entrants and once an outbreak starts, uh, usually visitation is eliminated, except for the most, uh, you know, most uh, critical compassionate care type visits. 
but but there's it's often you know with these with these outbreaks and facilities you'll we'll look and we'll see they're doing everything they they can they're following all the guidance but sometimes this is a tough virus it's easy to transmit and and i think we're we're learning more and more that airborne transmission uh, over short, predominantly over short distances, but also sometimes over longer distances in poorly ventilated settings can, can sustain transmission. Uh, but that's not the only long-term care facility affected where we've got, I think, 11, 11 facilities now with one or more cases uh, that we're working with. Regarding uh, close contacts, most of the venues for, for the close contacts is household transmission. Uh, but also uh, either personal or occupational contacts who are not in the home are, are the next in line behind that. And again, it just speaks to us when we're in the workplace, when we're out in social gatherings, is to, is to wear those face coverings. So doctor, has the health district gotten any reports of large Halloween parties? Um, and is there a concern we could see cases spike even further because of the holiday like previous? Well, uh, t time will tell uh, on the, any any effects from the holiday and, and people gathering. That's we usually see that at the earliest five to seven days later, more like ten to fourteen days to to pick up a signal from that. We did hear about one large gathering uh, that that I guess local law enforcement uh, interrupted in Marysville over the weekend. I have no more further information about that, but we'll certainly. Um, be watching, and again, you know that's just the first of many holidays on the calendar coming up, and we uh, we uh, we all need to try to find uh, safer ways to to celebrate our holidays. So it seems like the current wave has surpassed the second in almost every respect, but has yet to reach the severity of the first, uh, probably in terms of hospitalizations and such. Uh, how do you explain that? And uh, what are we doing now that's protecting us from high hospitalization and death numbers? Age. I would say age is the driving factor here. That back in, in the first wave, the, the median age, so the age of the half of the cases were younger than and half were older than, was in the mid 50s. And uh, a substantial proportion of the cases were in long term care facilities and other older adults. And that's what drove the hospitalization. Uh, we're, we've got a younger median age this time around. Most of the cases are occurring in folks 20 to 59 who are not immune from, uh, or maybe I should choose another word, who are not uh, protected uh, against hospitalization. Absolutely, we still see hospitalizations down into the 20s, but it's much less frequent in those groups, and, and that's what we've seen. So despite the incre increase in cases, which I think is caused, again, for all of us to double our efforts to, to try to prevent transmission. Our older, uh, our older uh, adults have done a good job of protecting themselves, I'm assuming by trying to stay away from younger folks uh, unless absolutely necessary. And then we all have to, in addition to just trying to prevent transmission in general, try to cocoon the older and other vulnerable uh, people in our population from exposure. Okay. Um, can the health district uh, go on to social media to counter the face mask misinformation? Well, I think we're, we're, we're usually, uh, yes. I mean, we, we, we do respond to that type of thing and usually uh, put out a blog or at least some, some uh, moderating and correcting comments. Any other questions? Uh, for Dr. Spitters, other countries are look are locking down, uh, describing deaths that are twice as high as earlier surges. Is that something that should be expected here? Well, I don't know that we should be expecting it. I think what we can and should be expecting is that we'll we'll pull it all together here and and bend that curve back down and evade a hospital surge. If we don't succeed in doing that and we get more transmission occurring into uh, the older population or within among the older population if it starts to amplify there then we are going to have a hospitalization problem and 
uh, public health and elected officials will then have to uh, determine how best to address that. During the first wave, we really had to shut things down. Uh, so we can't rule that out. Uh, but I think uh, the ball is in our hands right now. Let's try to avoid that, that situation altogether. Do you have uh, any update on uh, the flu season so far or, yeah. or regarding the flu? Yeah, well, you know, uh, we all need to be prepared for a flu season, both just for its on its own merits, because that can cause a lot of hospitalization and, and uh, suffering and death. Uh, on, in any average year, overall, it waxes and wanes year to year, but there are on an average about 30 deaths in Snohomish County annually due to influenza, sometimes higher, sometimes lower. That can compete uh, for hospital space and outpatient care and all the other healthcare resources that, that are going to COVID and other things. So we all got vaccinated, hopefully, as many of us can. Those of you who haven't, it's not too late. So please do it. Having said that, uh, there's limited to no influenza activity except for a few pockets in the middle of the US. I don't believe we've had any influenza identified uh, through the state lab or other laboratories in Washington state yet. And um, a lot of that is probably due to the limitations on travel and our pers interpersonal actions that are protecting against COVID are also protecting against influenza transmission. So uh, that's something to think about too, when we're kind of following the COVID guidance, we're also protecting ourselves and one another from influenza. A uh, question about contact tracing. How is it going? Um, is it still a helpful tool or are too many people either ignoring calls or refusing to give contact info? Well, our, our success in reaching contacts within 24 hours remains in the 70 to 80% range. Uh, it kind of oscillates uh, week to week, but that's that's where we're at. I think that's doing very well. If you look at the if the state, the state does some contact investigation work for uh, other local health jurisdictions and did some for us in the past before we, the CARES Act dollars permitted us to scale up our, our local uh, resources to address this. And they're running about 50%. So uh, I think we're doing a very good job. Uh, our staff is, are working very hard and reaching 70 to 80% within a day, about 80% within two days. And then the contacts are about 70 to 80 percent are being quarantined within uh, two days. So, uh, you know, uh, obviously 100 percent or 90 percent would be better, but I think we're doing pretty well compared to the statewide metric. And uh, I do think it has an impact because if those folks, the cases and contacts stay out of circulation, and if the contacts get tested and then we, inv and then we those who are infected, we find their contacts, you know, we can't eliminate transmission with that, but we can certainly uh, curb it. And that's the goal is trying to just limit the, the spread. And I think it's having a big contribution. So a uh, question about CARES Act, any hope for additional CARES type money? And maybe I'll start on that one that we are uh, hopeful that there'll be a second round of CARES Act uh, assistance. It's been really, essential for supporting all the activities um, that the doctors talked about and we've undertaken at Snohomish County. And a lot of those activities are gonna to have to continue the testing, contact tracing, uh, it went, if and when the vaccine comes out, distribution of that. But also we've uh, used existing CARES Act dollars to really help us uh, through this year. We had to stand up a quarantine center in Everett and then move it out to Monroe. That will have to continue. Uh, into 2021 and it's expensive. Uh, so we are very hopeful. The delegation has indicated they think there will be a, another round uh, after the election. Uh, the magnitude and what it'll be uh, used for, uh, can't say, but uh, it's really essential. And not to mention the businesses that are, have been helped uh, from the first round, um, small businesses and large businesses alike. Uh, it's really been a lifesaver. So. Uh, we're very hopeful and we're very much in need of additional assistance. Doctor, would you like to address it? Absolutely. I mean, the, uh, virtually uh, 
all that we're doing uh, to address this uh, outbreak from the, the public health end is, is supported by those CARES Act dollars. And, uh, uh, you know, we can't, we can't stop doing this on December 31. So I remain hopeful and optimistic and, and uh, grateful for Executive Summer's work with the federal delegation to, to uh, move, move us in that direction. Um, I also, I, you know, I failed to mention one key thing that another thing we're seeing, uh, hearing from contacts is that um, when so many times contacts on day six or seven of their 14 day quarantine will go get tested, which is a good thing to do. And because if they're infected, then we can start tracing their contacts. Uh, but if they're negative, that is not a, uh, a key out of quarantine. Uh, you still have to stay in quarantine the full 14 day period from your last exposure. And I think people have been uh, misinterpreting or getting mixed messages around that. We do want you to pursue testing about midway through your quarantine uh, and certainly want you to if you develop symptoms. But even if those results are negative, you need to ride out the full 14 day period. Any further questions? This is Carrie in the Joint Information Center. Not seeing any additional questions at this time and coming up on 10 o'clock, we will go ahead and wrap up. So thank you all again for joining us this morning and please do stay tuned for future media availabilities. Thanks. Thank you.